I'm talking to Andy Philo. He's built uh, several types of robots and different projects. Can you tell me more about them? Hi, my name is Andy Philo. My son and I, Blake Philo, we've been working on a rocket belt project. The goal of the rocket belt project has been to actually develop all the hardware. Where we started out, can you hear it? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, to start with, what we did is we looked at the balance point of a rocket belt. So we actually built this small model to say it's stable. If you actually flew, it's very stable. The second part was to use compressed air, so we designed this rocket belt, and this actually designed to pivot and go up and down under computer control. The next version was to build a full-scale mock-up. Full-scale mock-up has every working component that would be in a rocket belt to figure out the size that it would take to fit onto us. The next thing that we did is to work on a simulator, and the simulator is over here. The simulator is a computer-based simulator, and what it has in it is it has a mock-up of the hardware and sensors that actually respond to the type of controls. We've set it up like an arcade machine for the show so everyone here could try it easily without having to strap it on. So this is the rocket belt simulator and what it consists of is a demo mode where we can select several different venues so we can do things like go to Niagara Falls. It'll take about 15 seconds for it to load. There's all the instructions on the screen too to fly it. There's a throttle that makes you go up and down. The tubes make you go left and right, backwards and forwards. So as I increase the throttle, we take off, and we actually want to level our flight. There in the upper right hand, upper left hand corner, you can actually see a little version of myself flying this. So I can fly, and right now I'm flying down the uh, American River. I'm headed towards the uh, Niagara Bridge, the Rainbow Bridge. And as I adjust the controls, you can see it controls the, the, the banking and various positions. Are there any rocket packs in existence right now? Yes, there's actually several rocket packs that do exist, and they do commercial flights on a routine basis. All right, then. How about you? Do you have a one that you can actually fly in, or are you still working on the? It's a work in progress right now. These are the stages, and that's why I wanted to show you our progress, is that you know we're working towards that goal, but we're not there yet. Okay. What has kept the rocket pack from being a commercial success? The fuel right now has been restricted by the government post 9-11, so that the existing rocket belt technology is not largely accessible, and everyone's looking at using small jet engines as a replacement. Another thing is you got a small jet engine on your back. How do you keep from burning your legs? Well, the, the jet engine actually runs fairly cool. The, the exhaust cone is hot, but the rest of it's cool because it's sucking in air at such a high pressure that it's actually cooling down. Okay, I'm, I'm talking to Peter, and he has an exhibit called the Crucible, which is actually a fire truck that shoots fire out of it. We are the Crucible located in West Oakland. We provide classes in industrial arts for kids, adults. We do blacksmithing, um, welding, uh, flame working, glass working, jewelry making. We have outreach programs where we come into the community and we've taken fire trucks and we've outfitted them. The one behind me has a flamethrower on it. The one to my left has a poofer which shoots a 30 foot high ball of flame into the air. It's the crucible. Would you like to see the flames? Yeah, I'd like to see the flames. You like to see the flames? Yeah. Did you get that? I got that. <laughs> How far is it? I can feel the flames over here. Um, that's probably 1,200 degrees. Yeah. Have you guys started any fires? Uh, we try to not start the fires, though occasionally things happen to catch on fire, and we have a full team of fire safety people who take care of that problem. Okay. Well, how long did it take you to build one of these trucks? I have no idea. Like a, a group of volunteers for a couple of years or so? Uh, actually, one of these trucks, probably about, uh, I'm going to guess about three months with a small group of volunteers, five to seven people. Okay. Also, can you shoot off this one behind us? Sure, I can. I'd have to climb on top. Okay. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have these uh, trucks been used in any movies or TV shows? Maybe they look great in the movie Mad Max. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, let me see if I can grab Michael, who might be able to answer these questions for you. Hold on. A okay. Hello, oh, I'm talking to Michael Sturks. He's executive director. The question I have is: Any of these trucks been used in movies or TV shows? Uh, actually, this one was, was called uh, "The Mother of All," and it was on National Geographic. 
channel, um, and it's the mother of all barbecues for the San Francisco Fire Department. And it's actually got a giant barbecue in the back, and this fire cannon was developed as a way to uh, do target practice chicken cooking. Uh, yeah, actually, this this one was, uh, I taught two classes. The first class was called Fire Truck Restoration and Repair. The second was called Fire Truck Modification, and there's a whole team of students and faculty working on it. And this one was a, a group of uh, artists and crucible faculty working as part of the TV show. So it's always a team, team collective approach. Nick is about to pour molten bronze. He's taken a small crucible, heated uh, ingots of bronze, melted them, and he's going to pour them into a patterns that he's created in resin-based blocks of sand. And if you can look at the front of the booth, um, you can see some of the smaller pieces he had made earlier today. But in a moment, he'll pick up the outside of the furnace, pull out the crucible, and pour bronze. Hello, I'm uh, talking to Bill Ward, and he's from the Bay Area Lego Users Group. It has a nice setup, a whole bunch of Lego trains, buildings, and other things. Well, we're a club. We have um, a bunch of members, probably about a, a dozen or two active members and a whole bunch of inactive members, and ranging in age from preschool to retirement age. And we build various Lego models as a hobby and bring them to shows like this, or model railroad shows, or our club meetings, and put them on public display. A number of members are contributing to this display. I'd say probably about six or eight members are involved. Um, I have some models on the layout, but I would say a small percentage of them. Also, can you tell me about how long it takes to set up a, to build something out of Legos? Like one of these, you got the Lego trains here. And the complexity, because some models are a lot bigger than others, obviously, and. A lot of times, as with any creative endeavor, you go through a lot of mistakes before you come up with the final version. So it's really hard to gauge exactly how long it took. But I would say for maybe, let's say, a, a, a train engine it might take a few days or it might take you know, a few weeks, depending on how much time you spend working on it, and go through several different revisions along the way. And by the time it's finished, you know, it's always only a work in progress. We always find ways to improve them along the way. We have um, the blue building back. So that probably took me a few hours because once I had the basic idea done, the basic idea done, it's just a matter of replicating that for each each floor, each window, and so forth. I was a little kid, obviously, but uh, you know, everyone goes through what we call the dark age, where your Lego gets put up in the attic or maybe, God forbid, sold at a garage sale, and then at some point, maybe in your 20s or whatever you decide to get them out again and try building stuff. And that's the pattern that most adult LEGO fans go through. So the teenage years, we call them the dark ages, because nobody plays with LEGO in their teenagers, most, most people anyway. So I went through a dark age and rediscovered LEGO seriously about five years ago, although I picked it up a few points along the line before then. So the club is called the Bay Area LEGO Users Group. Our website is baylug.org, B-A-Y-L-U-G.org, and we're open to membership for individuals and families who are interested in Lego.